Maybe, I mean, if you, want, if you want to do something like this, go do it. You can do it. It's just putting, putting your mind to it, working hard. Oh, look at this guy in a Western shirt with the stamp buttons and the bell buckle. And the Skunk Works hat. Skunk Works hat. Hey man, so uh, you uh, drove a long way to Ohio to have a study date, it I appears. I did. It was, so, it was a pretty good study date. Who are you and uh, what's your deal? I'm Hunter Milgram and I'm from uh, Washington State. I drove the Miata out here. I came to build this BD5. It was in pretty rough shape when I started with it. Yeah, that's true. I think it's coming out looking pretty good. It does look really good. So how do you feel about it? I feel really good about it. it, it Put your mind to something and get something accomplished. And yeah, that's exciting. And this is the same jet airplane that was utilized in the Roger Moore James Bond movie, yep. Octopussy. That's correct. So, you had a great interest in aerospace engineering when you applied to Genius Garage before you came out and whatnot. Yeah. You wanted to learn something, get an opportunity you wouldn't be able to find out there where you're from. How do you feel now after having an opportunity like this? I feel pretty good. Um, definitely got to learn a lot about different techniques. I've, I've been used to more uh, industrial heavy truck type stuff. Yes. So this is much lighter. Oh, for sure. And uh, diff yeah, definitely different techniques of putting something together. Is that something that surprised you the most relating to the techniques of this airplane? Just how lightweight the fabrication is to... Yeah, yeah. I knew it was definitely going to be more lightweight. But yes. To see exactly how lightweight stuff gets put together. Yeah. Makes you respect it a lot more and the people that fly them a lot more. So this was designed in the 60s, and they started producing these in the early 70s. Yep. What has this done to your appreciation relating to engineering, fabrication, past, present, and future? You know, it just, it's kind of amazing to me. I mean, now we have all these tools, electronic tools, to, to help aid in designing this stuff. Mm -hmm. Those guys back then had a drafting table, piece of pencil, and a slide rule, and they come up with something like this. It's beautiful. And it works, and you, you know you might do it, and have to come back and uh, tweak, sure. tweak a couple things, do another iteration of something, and and then you take it back out there. But sure. What's something. your favorite aspect of this airplane design? Oh, maybe it's just its size. It's just so compact. You get every. There isn't any extra space. Every no. every bit of this plane is utilized. Like uh, this part of the this part of the wing is actually supposed to be the fuel tank. Yes. And like you, you seal it off and you end up fill that it off, in. and there's actually a fuel port that would end up going in this mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if you were actually to put fuel in it. Right, right, right. Um, mm -hmm. Neat parts underneath. Yep, it's yep. a very beautiful, very beautiful line, such so thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Real neat, real neat. Yep, and definitely did, we did things differently than most most planes are done, but not For saying sure. that you can't do it that way. Do you think this might inspire you someday to build your own airplane? Yeah, yeah. It, Maybe something slightly different. This is definitely a... Uh, you learned. This is more tricky than uh, I had anticipated. For sure. But I think that was kind of the same thing with everybody that had ordered these. They, they kind of marketed these as a simple, easy to build. Right. You can do it with some tin snips and a gun. <laughs> What's your opinion and, of that? I don't think you can quite do that. You need to at least have a little bit more skill or experience with it. Right. I mean, you might be able to actually do it with some tin snips and a rip yes. gun, but you have better built two or three aluminum planes before that. Well, frankly, it's a sophisticated little airplane. It goes fast and it's gotta be very precise. Yeah, so yeah. Any, a... any little problem with it and you're gonna be in the ground pretty quick. Yeah, you had to solve a lot of problems. You, you had to really up your game and learn and mm -hmm. um, have some helmet fires to put out, so to speak. Yep. How, uh, how do you feel, how's that affected you as an engineer and a problem solver for the future? Definitely one of those things where you just have to go you see the pro come up with a problem, figure out the best way to, to go about doing it, and then just uh, make it happen. Huh? Make it happen. Well, cool. Are you uh, glad now that you came out here for the summer to do oh, this for sort sure. of thing? How come? Oh, just to be, get the experience of being being around an airplane, getting to build the airplane, see all that, being around the race cars, the experiences that we've had. Sure. Running the race cars. Oh, and you went to the race with all of us yeah, to Road America. Yeah, yeah that was. So you got the opportunity to be part of that race. What, what did you think of that experience? I think that was absolutely awesome. What was your favorite aspects of it? Just the atmosphere of being at the races. Yeah. The sound, smell, walking through the paddock, and you, everybody's got their cars all lined up. And for sure. Did you enjoy the competition and some stress aspects of it too? Oh yeah, 
Yeah. There was definitely a meet. Yeah, you want you want to go fast. You want to beat everybody. Yeah. And obviously, you want the, the car to hold together and. Good. The couple problems that we had, do we work work through? For sure. Did you have fun with the guys there? I did. Good time. I did. Were you happy with uh, how the car finished? I, I was. Good. Didn't get obviously didn't get to run as long as we wanted to, but. Well, the race got cut short and ended under yellow. What are you gonna do? That's just part of life, and it happened. It was a fun weekend anyway. Well, good. So. I don't know, what else you want to tell everybody out there, all the young people out there interested in engineering and aerospace engineering and building airplanes and such? Just go out there and, I mean, if you want, if you want to do something like this, go do it. You can do it. It's just putting, putting your mind to it, working hard. And something Looking like through this. problems? You could, you could have a nice study day all summer long. <laughs> that sounds like a good line to end on. Well, do you have anything you want to say to anybody out there? Oh, just, I mean, just get it done. I mean, if you, if you want to go do something, make it happen. For sure. All right, guys. Well, this is Hunter from Washington State, and the last time you'll see him for a while. But in the meantime, hope you enjoyed the BD-5 build. I did. We're going to hang it from the ceiling over yeah, here. That'll over be there. fun. Hold on. we got to see what's going on in the background. What's going on in the background? Nothing. What are you talking about? Serious things, I'm sure. What's going on Very there? Very serious things. You guys are not... <laughs> Riker maneuver. Like it. it is the Riker maneuver. It was the Riker maneuver. The Riker maneuver. <laughs> We're going to hang the BD-5 from the ceiling. It's going to be super yeah. cool. I bet your school doesn't have a jet hanging from the ceiling next to a pterosaur. No, I'm, it doesn't. We'll have to work on that. Losers. In the meantime, we hope you like, comment, and subscribe. See you guys next time. Have a good day.